this just in. Thank you, thank you to all my Patreons. So, uh, dialogue happening recently on the Discord. Links to it below this video on YouTube, by the way. Uh, some people discuss this, and this is a uh, composite video to HDMI converter upscaler to 1080p. So, uh, yeah, this is something on, uh, uh, on eBay. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below where I got this. The shipping was really fast, too. I kind of figured it would be one of these <laughs> one of these one month delivery times on the slow boat from Asia or something, but no, it came out of uh I think uh um the northeast. It's a US uh delivery. Let me switch it over to 1080p, plug it into one of my bench displays and see how it works. So the programs that I'm about to boot up and run come from the Z80 Retro repo on GitHub. I'm running the software from this repo here, which is the, you know, the operating system, as well as the example file system code here. Let's take a look in here because this is a work in progress, as is everything. Uh, we just have to accept that. If you look in here, I'm actually on the dev branch. So the code you're going to see me running comes out of this branch. If you don't know how to do this, what you need to do is clone the uh, code. I use SSH. You can also use HTTPS uh, to grab the copy of this repo, but you need to check out the dev branch in order to see the exact versions of everything you see right now. If you don't know that much about this and you need help, feel free to ask in the video below and or on the Discord. There's a bunch of great people on the Discord that are helping out a lot of people, and it's really great, honestly, because <laughs> it's hard enough to do all this stuff and uh, on its own. Uh, and, and there are a lot of questions and a lot of discussion of a lot of things, and everybody's learning stuff, including myself. There's something there for everybody. So, yes, jump over to the Discord, and there's a clickable link below. Uh, as I said, this video on YouTube for you to log in if you don't know how to get there. Okay, so I'm on the dev branch and I have cloned this. I have done what it says to do down here in the in the in the you know, description on how to assemble it, build your SD card, all that other fun stuff. And then I also went and grabbed the example file system. And inside here, I'm of course on the main branch in this case. If you look at the programs in here and you do all the setup and stuff that this uh, uh, repo says to do, I'm running co example programs for the TMS9918. You've seen these on my channel before. If you've seen a lot of my videos, I'm going to run the uh, sprites demo and the breakout demo. This is a half-finished game that I'm playing around with. Uh, I'll talk a lot more about breakout in another video. I mean, a lot of things going on right now. A lot of work has to get done before I can get back to playing around with all this fun stuff. But this is where the code comes from that you're gonna see me play around with in this video. But I always wanna make really sure that everyone knows where everything comes from and follow along so that you can run everything on your own system that you've built. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and reset my retro board. I'm gonna go over to drive B because that is where all the code ends up. If you follow the uh, readme file here in the example file system, I haven't talked a lot about this yet, but this thing uh, uh, has a make file. And what it's going to do is if we look at the make file, it is going to uh, allow you to type in make burn and it will burn an image onto the, where is it? Is the clean, there it is. It'll copy the image on your SD card and it's pre-configured for Raspberry Pi. And I've talked about how to reconfigure this for other types of systems with a makefile.local to override the settings and so on. The short of it is the uh, makefile default file is where the settings are for which drive this will copy the files onto. So in here, there'll be a make is slot equals one because slot uh, zero is for drive A, one is for B and so on. Because this is slot one, when I boot it up, I can go over to drive B and I can see the files from that example file system, which includes among other things, 
uh, these test programs that you have definitely seen before. So let's play around with sprites and see what that does. And of course, I'm so used to Unix systems, I put a path in there, which you don't want to do. Oops. It'd be nice if I could learn how to type. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, this is how I plugged all this stuff in here, right? So I'm set to, uh, what do we got here? There's a 1080p, right? So I'm on, uh, I got my HDMI cable here running over to my bench screen. This video, I just plugged in the audio cables. That's not necessary. They're just in the way. I didn't want them flopping around. Video cable, the yellow one goes in the yellow jack. I would certainly hope that if you watch my channel, you're aware of that. And it plugs into the video on the VDP board here. I got a joystick on there as well. And uh, my SD card, the usual setup that we've all seen at least two dozen times. Joystick is plugged into this port over here. I didn't even solder the other one in because this board is still a prototype. Uh, I don't even have the right sized components. I've still got them on order. I want to get the right resistor so you get the proper retro feel. I don't even have the resistor pull-ups in here, which, by the way, is okay most of the time, provided that you use 74LS uh, chips in here. If you use TTL chips rather than CMOS ones, they'll act as if, at least most of the time, like they have a pull-up resistor on their inputs. Normally, you wouldn't want to do this, but I don't want to waste the SIPs. They cost a lot of money, relatively speaking. I don't want to, 50 cents? I don't remember. Uh, anyway, more than a penny and I don't have a lot in stock, so I want to save them for the other boards. Uh, anyway, the joystick will work like this most of the time. Uh, once in a blue moon, you will have a failure if you don't pull these up. So do as I say, not as I do. All right, so let's play around and see what we got going on here. So no, I don't have any way to really capture this, so I'm going to have to film it with my phone. <laughs> as you can see, this is working out pretty nicely. There's 1080p on the capture device. I'm very happy with this, mainly because I don't have anything that does composite video down here in the basement right now, other than like a 50 year old black and white TV that doesn't even have a composite in. I would have to use RF modulator, blah, blah, blah. I don't want, to, I don't want anything to do with that. All right, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Success. Let's try it on 10, or rather 720p and see how that works. Well, the monitor flips over and uh, to 720p, and it works just as good as 1080. All right. Woohoo! Only, what was it? It wasn't even $10, including shipping. I'm going to have to say I give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.